part of the problem also is that the debate is not is framed from a viewpoint of you know uh, young kids vandalizing and assaulting our pristine city, and it's not ever phrased you know or rarely phrased in the in freedom of expression. And what's ironic is that you know when you have the Arab Spring and and people celebrate, oh look at the walls of Libya and they're filled with graffiti of protest in Egypt and they're filled with graffiti of protest against Muammar Gaddafi or, you know, um, against these dictatorial regimes, you know, um, but there's no recognition that if that was happening here in Canada or back home in the United States, that people would not be ce celebrating that graffiti, you know, as a, as, a, as a voice of the people, that they would be condemning it as um, property damage. One of the biggest problems is, is that it's handled in a black and white manner and that you can't talk about graffiti in a black and white manner properly, I believe. I think you have to look at all the different gray areas that are involved and all the different contradictions that are involved. And graffiti artists will even admit most of the contradictions. Like, a lot of them will say, you know, I don't want people fucking tagging on my house. And they're usually the ones who say, I think it's uncool to tag on people's houses, you know. But there's a, a lot of inherent contradictions within graffiti which is interesting because there's a lot of inherent contradictions within society, you know, and so graffiti is a real, as an art form, is doing what art's supposed to be, is supposed to reflect those contradictions which are inherent in our society. And to just criminalize it, I think you're, you're losing a lot of insight into what's really happening.